Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is lesson 6.6, .6, compare fractions using benchmarks. We are going to be working on page 123, and here's your essential question for tonight. How can you use benchmarks to compare fractions? Now, we're going to look at a story problem. This problem is not in your Go Math book, but we're going to watch and listen. It reads, Zach made a popcorn snack. He mixed five eighth gallon of popcorn with one half gallon of dried apple rings. Did he use more dried apple rings or more popcorn? So we want to look at one half and we want to look at five eighths and we want to see which did he use more of, one half or five eighths. Now we have a problem. The two and the eight as our denominators are different. So it's not as easy to compare. We're going to use a model to compare one half to five eighths. Now here I have fraction bars representing the equal parts in the fractions. So here I have my two parts and this is for my dried apple rings and here I have for my five eighths I cut my fraction bar into eighths for my popcorn mix. Now I'm going to shade how much dried apple rings Zach used. Well he used one half so that's one part out of two parts he used for the dried apple rings. Now I'm going to shade in my 5 eighths. So here's 1 eighths, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths. Now notice that 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, but Zach used 5 eighths of the popcorn. So we need to shade in one more of these 1 eighth strips. So now I can see that Zach used more popcorn than dried apple rings because 5 eighths is greater than 1 half. 1 half is equal to 4 eighths, but he used 1 more eighth, which is 5 eighths. So 1 half is less than 5 eighths eighths. And Zach used more popcorn mix than the dried apple rings. Now boys and girls, what if I wanted to compare one half and five eighths without using a model? Well, I'm going to look and notice that I have different denominators for one half and five-eighths. It would be easier for me if I could compare one-half out of eighths. So if I have the fractions one-half and I have five-eighths, I'm going to look at my one-half and I'm going to think if I have a fraction that's equal to, to one-half that is out of eighths, then I could compare it to my 5 eighths. Well, what is 1 half of 8? That's right, 4 is 1 half of 8. So 4 eighths equals 1 half. Now, since 4 eighths equals 1 half, I can compare my 4 eighths to 5 eighths. Now, I can clearly see, since my denominators are the same, I can compare them easy, easier. So 4 eighths and 5 eighths, I can see that 4 eighths is less than 5 eighths. Because 4 is less than 5. Now, since 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, 1 half is less than 5 eighths. In this lesson, we are going to use benchmarks to compare fractions. A benchmark is a known size or amount that helps you understand a different size or amount. You can use the 1 half benchmark to help you compare 
fractions. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at zero and we're going to be looking at one half and one whole because we know these easily. We can understand what they are and they're going to help us compare fractions. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at number two in your Go Math book on page 123. They want us to compare four twelfths and four sixths. Well, I noticed that I have different denominators, so it's not as easy to compare these fractions. I'm going to use my benchmarks and a number line to help me compare these fractions. Now, I'm going to look at my first fraction, which is four twelfths, and I'm going to use my benchmarks to compare this fraction. Now, I used a number line and I cut it into 12 parts. 1 twelfth, 2 twelfths, 3 twelfths, 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, 6 twelfths would be where my half would be. So this would be 6 twelfths. Also, because 6 is half of 12. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, and 12 twelfths, which would be equal to one whole. Now, I'm going to place my four twelfths on the number line. Now, since I know that this is six twelfths here, I know that four twelfths will be right here. Now, I'm seeing that four twelfths is less than six twelfths, which is a half. So, four twelfths is less than a half. Now I'm going to look at my second fraction, which is 4 sixths. I drew a number line that is cut into six equal parts. 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, which is where my half mark is because 3 is half of 6. 4 sixths, 5 sixths, and 6 sixths, which is equal to a whole. Now I'm going to place my 4 sixths on the number line. 4 sixths is 1 greater than 3 sixths. So now I can see that 4 sixths is greater than 1 half. Now if I look at both of my fractions that I'm trying to compare, 4 twelfths is less than 1 half and 4 sixths is greater than one half. So I can compare these fractions by saying that four twelfths is less than four sixths because four twelfths is less than one half and four sixths is greater than one half. Okay, let's look at number three in your Go Math book. We have two eighths and one half. We need to compare two eighths to one half. Well, I'm going to think of my fractions and compare them to one half. Well, I already have one half here, so really I just need to compare my two eighths to a half, which is this fraction here. So I need to think out of eighths, how does two eighths compare to a half? Well, if I have two eighths and I have the denominator of 8, what would be 1 half of 8? Well, 4 eighths is 1 half of 8. So 4 eighths equals 1 half. So now that we have our 2 eighths and our 1 half, which is 4 eighths, we can compare the 2 eighths to 1 half. Now I have 2 and 4 as my numerators. So I'm going to think 2 is less than 4 eighths. 2 eighths is less than 4 eighths. And since 4 eighths is equal to 1 half, 2 eighths is less than 1 half because 1 half is equal to 4 eighths. Okay, boys and girls, let's look at number four in your Go Math book. We have three fifths and we have three thirds. Now, I'm going to use a number line to look at these two fractions. Now, boys and girls, I'm going to look at both of my fractions. I have three fifths 
and 3 thirds. And I'm going to see which one of these fractions could I compare to our benchmarks of 0, 1 half, and 1 whole. Well, right away, do you notice that 3 thirds, 3 thirds is equal to 1 whole. Whole. So if I were to put 3 thirds on a number line, 3 thirds would be here, which would be at one whole. Now my number line is cut into fifths. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and five fifths would be also equal to a whole. But I can see that I only have three fifths. So 3 fifths would be right here. This would be 3 fifths compared to 1 whole, which would be 5 fifths. Now I'm seeing that 3 thirds is equal to a whole also. So my 3 fifths does not equal a whole. It's less than a whole. So I can say that 3 fifths is less than 3 thirds because 3 fifths is less than 1 whole. Let's look at number 5 in your Go Math book. We have 7 eighths and 5 tenths and we need to compare these two fractions. Now I'm going to compare these two fractions to my benchmarks. So if I have my number line here and I have my zero mark, my half mark, and my one whole mark. Now I'm going to look at both fractions and I want to compare them to one half. Now if I look at my seven eighths, out of eighths, what would be equal to a half? Well, four eighths is equal to one half. So in this section, I would put my four eighths on my number line here. Now, I'm going to look at my second fraction, which is 5 tenths. Now, I'm going to think, what would be the half mark for 5 tenths? Well, what is half of 10? 5 is half of 10. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So here is where my 5 tenths would go. And my 4 eighths is down here. Now 4 eighths is equal to 1 half. Now if I compare 5, oh, I'm sorry, 4 eighths and 7 eighths, I know that 7 eighths is greater than 4 eighths. So 7 eighths would be greater than 1 half. So I would say that my 7 eighths would be here close to the whole mark because 8 eighths is equal to 1 whole. So now if I look at both of my fractions, my 5 tenths and my 7 eighths, who is larger? My 7 eighths is larger to 5 tenths and 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. So 7 eighths is the greater fraction. So 7 eighths is greater than 5 tenths because 7 eighths is greater than 1 half. Okay, boys and girls, let's jump down to number 16. It says Erica ran 3 eighth mile and Maria ran 3 fourth mile. Who ran farther? So I want to know which one of these fractions is larger. Now I'm going to use a number line and my benchmarks to help me solve this problem. Now I have two number lines and one of my number lines is cut into eighths because one of my fractions is three eighths and the other number line is cut into fourths because my other fraction is three fourths. So now I want to compare three eighths to a half. Well, I know that out of eighths, four eighths is equal to a half. Now, if I'm looking at three eighths and four eighths, I know that 
3 eighths will be right here and it is less than 1 half. Now let's look at our second number line that's cut into fourths and we're going to compare our 3 fourths to a half. Now I know that half of 4 parts is 2 parts so 2 fourths is equal to a half. Now my fraction is 3 fourths. If I count 1, 2, 3 out of 4 parts, this would be where my 3 fourths would be. Now, if I look at both fractions, 3 fourths is greater than 1 half, and 3 eighths is less than 1 half. So if I'm comparing 3 eighths and 3 fourths, I know that 3 fourths is greater than 3 eighths. So Maria ran farther. All right, boys and girls, on page 124, here are your homework questions. You need to do numbers 1 and 2 and also 3 through 6. Have a great evening. Don't forget to assess yourself, and we will see you tomorrow in class. Bye.